and I am live. So, it's been a few weeks since the uh, the last one of these little videos I've been making. Had a few weeks off over Christmas, and I've been thinking about the direction that I want to take these in, and I think it would be a good time to go back through and redo a lot of the videos that I did quite a few years back in my private group, Advanced Fundamental Health, where I went through the basics. A couple of reasons why I think it would be good to do these again. One is that the Facebook overlords deleted a bunch of my videos because I used naughty terms in the titles like testosterone. And secondly, because I think some of my feelings or approaches to things have changed, or maybe I've become more succinct in my vernacular talking about these things. But a few thousand consults later and several hundred new clients later, my thoughts have most likely changed and evolved. So I think it's worth revisiting these topics. If you are watching this video in my private group live and the quality is terrible, it's because I'm in the middle of a snowstorm and I will be uploading the better quality content shortly. If you're watching this on YouTube, then that had nothing to do with you and we will carry on. So one of the key troubleshooting topics in TRT is how often should I inject testosterone? And the answer to that question is not the frequency that's on the package insert. If you are using an anthate or cipionate, I think most people uh, who have been in this space for a while, or if you've read at least half an hour of content on TRT on the internet, you'll realize that one of the key issues that we talk about is injection frequency. And although injection frequency is not the be all and end all, you cannot solve your all the problems of your mental health, physical health, all the circumstances of your life with doing more frequent testosterone injections. It is sure as shit the first place to start with reducing side effects, particularly relating to the peaks and troughs of testosterone. If you want to get the too long didn't read version of this video and you can watch this now and then you can just click the X at the top of the screen and fuck off and do something else with your time, you need to inject testosterone, cipionate or anathate, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Twice a week minimum, easy. Now, why twice a week? That's a good question. Because the package insert will say that you should inject testosterone maybe every two weeks or every three weeks, maybe if you've got sustain on. Or your doctor potentially told you that you can just inject testosterone once a week. And if you could inject testosterone once a week or every fortnight, we'd all be fucking doing that. We don't actually like stabbing ourselves. Not everyone on TRT is a masochist. Maybe some of you are, not me. So the most important thing to understand here is that if you could get away with less injections and it actually worked out well, we wouldn't all be stabbing ourselves all the time in our spare time. It's not really something that we look forward to doing. I mean, it is using a little insulin syringe. And if diabetic little girls can do it multiple times a day, I think full grown men can do it a couple of times a week, but it's still not the most convenient thing to do. I'm sure someone in the comments is going to cry about relating full grown men to little girls, but that's the world we live in these days. So when it comes to doing your injections, the reason why we need to do it twice a week is that the half-life has nothing to do with the peak concentrations and therapeutic window of testosterone. For example, I'm drinking coffee now. I'm assuming most people watching this video will consume or have in their lives consumed some form of caffeine. Caffeine has a half-life of eight to 10 hours, depending on the study that you read. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't find that coffee gradually increases in effectiveness over three to four hours and then gradually tapers off over four hours. That's fucking nonsense. We know that coffee or just caffeine in general peaks, you know, depending on your individual metabolism of caffeine, peaks quite early and then kind of crashes off. And although it can disrupt your sleep and activate your adrenal glands and, you know, interact with adenosine receptors for a longer period, the main window of coffee's uh, effect that you are drinking it for, or you just like the taste and you get the stimulation as a nice little adjunct, that's not a smooth gradual release over eight hours. So to assume that because you read in a study that testosterone has a seven to 10 day half-life, that it's going to have a seven to 10 day effectiveness window doesn't make any sense. And when you look at the pharmacodynamics of testosterone, when you look at the studies of an individual, you know, 250 milligram injection where they, you know, pin someone with a mill and then they measure the concentrations in their blood, you find that you get a very pronounced peak, usually on day one, sometimes day two, depending on the individual. And then you get quite a, a stark decline after that. And then it kind of pitters out uh, over the remaining couple of weeks. So the most important thing in understanding testosterone from that point of view in terms of looking at the research, but also just using it and it's subjectively experiencing it, is that the vast majority of men benefit from twice a week injections. And 
the advantage of doing a twice a week injection is that you're injecting less oil. And because you're injecting less oil, one, you need to be more precise with the dosing, but two, the less oil you're injecting, the shallower you can go with your intramuscular shot and therefore the smaller needle you need to push that amount of oil through. So it means that we can use smaller needles to stab ourselves more often. Personally, I'd actually rather inject myself with a 27 gauge insulin syringe that's half an inch long into the delt twice a week than sticking myself with a one inch 25 gauge once a week into the glute. I just prefer that from a comfort standpoint, but that's also a factor. So the question here is, well, what about when we need to go beyond two injections a week? And one thing that I would like to address, and I'm sure I'm going to rustle some jimmies and some people are going to send this to their provider or tag someone in the post and they're going to cry about it, is that they'll say, well, SHBG is the determining factor for how many injections you should do beyond twice a week. Now, some people who are particularly low IQ will say that you should actually do a even less frequent injection, like let's say once a week or maybe every five days if you feel like keeping a running calendar in your phone for no good reason, to try to push SHBG down, which is illogical. It doesn't work like that, sorry. Not effectively anyway. But people will say, well, SHBG is the determining factor for how often you should do your injections. And if you are doing your, if you are having a low SHBG and what number is low seems to be quite a contentious topic or open to interpretation. But if you have a low SHBG, let's say in the bottom quartile of the range, hypothetically, then that means you should do more frequent injections because your testosterone is going to be less bound. You're going to have more free testosterone floating around and therefore it's going to get metabolized quicker or something along this line. This is a reductionist view of how biology works, how hormones work, but most importantly has nothing to do with the ester being cleaved in the liver. This is the most important thing, in my opinion, if we're going to be looking at one reason that determines injection frequency. But I think there's a few things. I think there's a myriad of things that we need to look at. And I think that SHBG is part of the equation. I'm not going to completely dismiss it as redundant. But I think SHBG has more to do with the amount of testosterone that you need to put into your body to achieve an optimal free testosterone level. I would say it's at the bottom of the list of these three things that determine your injection frequency, assuming that you're injecting more than twice a week, which I think is the minimum. So the thing that I think we need to look at, and again, we can't really test this outside of genetics, but we also don't exactly know what liver enzyme actually metabolizes cypionate or enanthate specifically. So it's a bit of a hypothetical, but the main thing, in my opinion, that determines the efficacy window of testosterone in your body is how quickly or how slowly you cleave the ester from testosterone in the liver to make it bioavailable in the body. It has nothing to do with SHBG. And this likely has to do with how quickly or how slowly you metabolize other substances, but it's also not really something that we can check or we can test. So this kind of puts a question mark there. But I think the biggest factor, and I made a video about this in my group uh, maybe a month or so ago, is that I think a big factor in your injection frequency is how well you are doing. And then that's an esoteric, wafty, meaningless thing to say, but hear me out, is that one, I think the poorer state of baseline health you have, the more frequently you need to inject. Because if you are an obese alcoholic who's insulin resistant, I think that you are going to be far more prone to the negative side effects of high peaks of testosterone that become supra physiological because your physiological ceiling for how much testosterone you should have in your body is going to be lower than someone who's healthy because you have no business having super high testosterone levels if you are unhealthy. Your body will simply not tolerate it. It is not set up to metabolize it. It is not set up to receive it. It is not set up to actually be able to use this hormone properly because there is no logical biological circumstance that someone who has their health trashed to the nines is going to have a free testosterone of you know 1500 or, or 50 depending on the units that you're using so i think that's one factor but the other factor that i like to look at with this is well why are some guys more sensitive to the peaks and troughs of testosterone psychologically why is it that they can feel more of what's going on with this and we also know that you know some guys will take antidepressants for six to eight weeks and not even notice a difference, while some guys will take antidepressants for one or two days and notice a massive difference. Now, if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I don't condone using antidepressants, period. But 
Some people are simply more aware of their baseline mental state, their subjective state of being. Some people are more aware of these things. And sometimes this can be a placebo or nocebo thing. Sometimes this can be someone who's maybe a bit neurotic or a little bit of a hypochondriac or maybe needs to go outside and interact with the world a bit more and get out of their head. But regardless, some people are more sensitive to what's going on in their body than others. And I think that sometimes... If you're in a particularly bad state, whether it's physically or mentally, you could benefit from doing more frequent testosterone injections because you personally, subjectively, may be more sensitive to the peaks and particularly the troughs of testosterone in your body. So if you're like, hey, I'm not doing well, my mental health's crap, my physical health's crap, I need to get my shit back on track, then I would recommend starting with three injections a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Whereas if you're doing well, and everything is going great, you know, no issues, everything's cool, two injections a week. And if you start doing two, two injections a week and you go, hey, I really notice, and whether it's placebo or not, I don't give a fuck because as long as you keep your weekly dose the same, you can do two injections a week, you can do three, you can do daily if you want to. It's up to you. How often do you want to stab yourself? So if, if, if your practitioner is going, oh, no, it's just placebo, you know, if, if you're feeling better on Monday after you do your shot and you're feeling better on Tuesday and then you're feeling a bit slow on Wednesday and by Thursday you're hanging out for your injection, that's just placebo effect. Who fucking cares? You can do three injections a week if you want to. It's up to you. Go for it. As long as you're consistent with what you're doing, I think that that's totally fine. One rule of thumb that I like to have for my clients is I say inject as often as you need to to forget that you need to do your testosterone injection. So if you're hanging out for your next injection, then maybe it's worth doing a doing a more frequent injection. Maybe it's worth doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't think every other day is a good injection frequency because the day changes. And I think that the juice is not worth the squeeze going from three to 3.5 injections per week. I think that, that makes something more complex than is what is needed. And I don't think that the return on investment is there. But another thing that we can look at is things like acne and water retention. And what we need to understand with TRT is that if you've been hypergonadal for years and then your body has no idea that you're about to just jack your testosterone levels to double, triple, quadruple, 5X, quintuple, where they were before, that's a big change for the body. That's a lot of internal enzymatic processes that need to get with the business. So your body might have some lag time in adjusting and you might get some transient acne, you might get some transient insomnia, you might get some transient water retention and smoothing things out and giving your body more stability because the male body is not accustomed to weekly or bi-weekly varying hormones. We have a daily hormonal rhythm. Keeping things as stable as possible is going to be as ideal as we can possibly think for the body. It's just, well, what at what point do we draw a line and go, no, injecting more often than this really isn't kind of worth it. It's not worth the effort of an extra stab per week or an extra four stabs a month. And I think that brings me to my final point, which is well, what about daily injections? And I think daily injections work great if you're doing a subcutaneous injection, if you actually tolerate subcutaneous shots and they actually work for you. But daily intramuscular shots, I I did them for a year or so. I know guys who still do them. And I can assure you that after about a year to two years, depending on how stubborn someone is or how motivated you are, depending on what lens you want to put on that, they get old. And I don't think that doing double the amount of injections per week is worth it going from three times a week to daily. And I think if you do need a daily administration of testosterone and, and you, like most people, don't benefit from sub Q as well as people would like to think that we all do, then maybe you should be looking at a transcrotal cream. But going from two injections a week to three injections a week can be a game changer for some people in resolving acne, resolving stability, resolving side effects, and just generally feeling better on TRT. Going from one injection a week to two injections a week, massive game changer. For some people going from two to three, no different. For other people going from two to three, massive. But doubling the amount of shots as opposed to adding one extra injection per week and then going all the way up to adding an extra three and a half injections per week, or sorry, four injections per week, juice is not worth the squeeze past that point. It's really not. So two injections a week, if you can tolerate it, and if you don't notice a difference day to day, fantastic. If you do notice a difference and you want to do three injections a week for more stability, go for it. 
do it. But what you might find is that if you needed to do three injections per week for the first year or two on TRT, and you get your health dialed in and your baseline state becomes optimal, you might find that you can go back to two shots a week and not have any problems with it. 